This is another video about the F1 student visa interview at the U.S. Consulate. Today, let's focus on the legal issue of showing that you do not have immigrant intent. What this means and the interview questions that arise from this issue, because there's a 100% chance that the officer will consider this. It's a requirement for the F1 student visa. Hi, I'm Soyuna Tag. I'm an attorney and one of the founders of Adam Law Group. We release videos about the law, including immigration. If this is of interest to you and you want to know more about how the law can serve you, please subscribe. I'm not going to give my whole explanation again about why it's important to understand the underlying legal issues that the questions come from versus just practicing specific questions. You know, which may change and throw you off. Um, but if you'd like, you can watch the video entitled The Meaning Behind the F1 Interview Questions to, to get that. But a little recap about the legal requirements for the F1 student visa. You must establish in the student visa interview that you are a bona fide student qualified to pursue a full course of study. Again, that issue is in that video I just mentioned. And you also have to establish that you will comply with the terms and conditions of your visa, which includes definitely not having any present or immediate immigrant intent. And that is the subject of this video. And also you have to show that you have enough financial resources to support you uh, throughout your studies in the US without you having to engage in unauthorized work. So that whole topic, um, I'll cover that in a separate video because it's so long. You know, who'd think that a consular officer has all of these legal requirements that are requiring multiple videos for me to even just cover that they have to assess in just those few short minutes of the student visa interview, right? Officially, consular officers are to presume that every applicant has immigrant intent. So it's your job. You must convince the officer that you fully intend to depart the United States upon finishing your F1 activities. And that you do not plan to use the student visa as some gateway just to get to the US and just stay there not as a student. So as is the case with every single visa interview, your credibility is incredibly important. So if you're interested, please see our video um, where I talk about the soft skills uh, about how to conduct yourself in the F1 visa interview for maximum authenticity, which helps obviously establish your credibility to the officer. Let's talk about what not having immigrant intent means and doesn't mean in the student visa context. To show this, you must have a residence abroad, a home that you have no intention of abandoning. So you must have the present intention to continue having or maintaining your home so that you can return to it when you're done with your F1. For some student visa applicants, the residence may be maybe their own home, but for many students, this may be the family home that, you know, where you live with your parents or grandparents or guardians, uh, which is totally fine. In fact, the FAM, which is short for Foreign Affairs Manual, that's the the guidebook that actually instructs officers on the legal standards and what they're looking for in your student visa interview. Um, and I'll read it uh, from there. As most students are relatively young and many reside with parents or guardians, you can consider a student to be maintaining a residence abroad if they intend to return to reside with parents or guardians. So uh, that's really good news because for other categories of visas, this uh, having residence abroad is a, a stricter requirement. So this is a good thing. Also, you must intend to depart the United States at the conclusion of your F1 activities. By the way, F1 activities means your studies, uh, post-completion OPT, and includes that 60-day grace period. So it's okay to do OPT, that optional practical training, which is authorized work experience after graduating because that is a part of your F1 program. It's also okay to pursue further education or to extend your stay as an F1 student to continue studying. So strong ties to one's home country, that's typically how someone will show that they are likely to leave the US and return uh, at the conclusion of their, you know, the, the term of their visa. But the FAM, again, recognizes that for students, it might be a little bit different than, you know, for other visa categories. So I'll read you a section from the Foreign Affairs Manual. 
It is natural that the student does not possess ties of property, employment, and continuity of life typical of B visa applicants. So those are tourist visa applicants, for example. These ties are typically weakly held by student applicants as the student is often single, unemployed, without property, and is at the stage in life of deciding and developing their plans for the future. So this recognition by the Department of State really helps a lot because if you're held to uh, the same standard as some of the other visa categories, I think it would be really tough. Now, that helps, but nonetheless, the stronger your ties uh, that are outside of the United States, the better, of course, to show your present intent to leave the United States when you're done. So, you know, maybe you have something like uh, you have a family business um, that you're going to work in and your studies uh, are for that purpose. So if you have things like that, that's something you definitely want to share with the officer to really firmly um, kind of strengthen the fact that you, you do not have immigrant intent and that you will return to your country. If you have reasonable and believable plans to go to another country, not return to your home country, but to another one at the conclusion of your F1, that is okay too. So the key is that you're not going to stay in the United States past the terms and conditions of your, of your visa. So it could be something like, you know, after your F1, you're going to pursue graduate school and you know, a program in this other country, or you have family members well situated that are going to join and uh, help run the business or seek you know, a career there. So it could be a number of those things. One thing I want to emphasize is the difference between present intent versus some hypothetical future intent. So long as the officer believes that your present intent right now is to depart at the end of your studies or OPT, then you don't have immigrant intent. Just the mere possibility that in the future you may do something else or may apply to change your status or even apply for a green card, that does not negate your current state of mind of having no immigrant intent. No one knows the future for sure. Just think about all those F1 students who physically could not depart at the end of their studies because of the pandemic. So, um, so it's what counts is your present intention, your immediate intention. Also, considering the many F1 students that I know, it's quite possible that an F1 student may end up changing their plans and end up perhaps changing status to an H1B to stay and live and work in the United States. Or you may even fall in love with someone and end up you know, marrying and staying. So things can change in the future. But again, what matters is your present intent. So let's go over some questions. These are sampling of the types of questions an officer may ask to determine whether you have immigrant intent. What will you do after finishing your studies in the U.S.? Now, the Foreign Affairs Manual uh, states that students are not expected to or do not necessarily have a long-range plan and may legitimately not be able to fully explain their plans at the conclusion of their studies. Whew, that is helpful. As you can see, you don't have to know the future 100% for certain. But in answering this question, of course, you should give your actual authentic answer. So whether it's that you plan to pursue a PhD or come back home and get work experience, whatever it is, make sure that you answer you know, what is truthful for you. However, if you say, and I know I talked about the fact that plans may change in the future, but if your response right now, or if your goal truly right now is to, after my studies are over, I will get a job in the US and stay. So I'm not talking about OPT, which is authorized as part of your F1, but you know beyond that or my goal is to, no matter what, get married and get a green card. Um, things like that, that would definitely be interpreted as you having current immigrant intent. Another question can be, have you been to the US before? They definitely know the answer to this question. Having a prior history of departing the US on time can be positive. So people, so some people think that not having been to the US before is a problem. If that's you, don't worry because statistically, many people's first trip to the US is on an F1 visa. There could also be questions about your family because family can tend, can tend to show ties to your home country or maybe even ties to the United States. So it could be something like, where or in what country do your parents, brothers, sisters, et cetera, live? Do you have any family that lives in the US? 
as always, be truthful. There's no black and white, right or wrong answer, and your family live wherever they live. However, if you have a family member who is in the U.S. without authorization, it may definitely be worth discussing that and the strength and weakness of your case overall with an attorney. Another question can be something like, where do you plan to go after you finish your studies in the U.S.? For this one, I want to remind you that the key is that you are departing the U.S. So you could be coming back home to your home country or to another country. So either one would be fine as long as it's credible and reasonable. Another question can be, what are your career goals after you finish your studies in the U.S.? Your response, which will can only be authentically your own, so that's your specific situation, but I want you to think through that response and, you know, practice it and really consider it so that the answer is congruous, reasonable, and believable. So let me give an example. Let's say the answer is something like, I'm going to return back home to my home country and get a job in X field. But let's say there happens to be no opportunities in your home, home country for that field. Well, then that answer doesn't really make sense. But you can have that same situation, but if, instead if you said something like uh, acknowledging that, saying, I will apply the skills that I learn and uh, partner with someone or whatever to develop and participate in the development of that field, uh, or my skills will be in demand because it's an area that is just opening up you know, in this country. So something like that, then that would make a lot more sense and would show that you've really uh, considered it and have a reasonable plan uh, for why you want to return and what you want to do after your studies. As I mentioned, we'll do another video regarding all the stuff about your financial resources that you will have without engaging in authorized work. And you can check out the other student visa interview videos, which we'll link to below. In the meantime, I hope this gave you a bit of a better understanding of the issue of immigrant intent, which you must overcome at the student visa interview. Armed with that understanding, you can better respond in a way that steers you clear of a denial based on having immigrant intent. If you found this helpful, please like the video. And for more like it, please subscribe. Also, Please feel free to comment below regarding any topics you may want us to cover because we're definitely looking at those for future videos. Lastly, we just launched SimVisa, a service that is a more affordable DIY option for doing certain immigration filings. The link will be below in case you or someone you know may be interested. Have a great day and I wish you a great journey to the United States.